Mike check, Mike check. Hey, it's Chris Jenkins, credential member of the media, covering the Carolina Panthers for Charlotte Vibe. How is everybody doing? The Carolina Panthers have made, I think it's the first time in 10 or 12, probably 12 years, my co-host will correct me. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him on right now because he's here to help me out today. Andre Cassidy, how you doing? I'm feeling electric, my guy. I mean, I haven't felt this level of electricity since that first pick that was made back, what, 12 years ago. Electricity running through your veins, huh? I feel it, man. I am definitely feeling it. And yeah, I'll tell you what. <laughs> wow, a lot of stuff running in the background. So we're working out the kinks here. But yeah, I mean, this guy right here, this Bryce Young guy, I'm ready. I'm you ready. ready? I mean, I don't really don't really don't know what to say right now because I have so much electricity flowing through here. But um, yeah, I'm really excited. Hey, you don't have to know what to say, but you know, the spill, right? Chris Jenkins here alongside my co-host Andre Cassidy, man of the people, men of the people, and these shows that are live, they're interactive, they're in 4K right now, 100 for the percent for the reason of interacting with you. That's the difference between our media and the other credential medias is we strive, maybe talk radio, but they, you can't see that, right? And you know, we like to let you guys come on the show. We're not gonna do that tonight just yet, but we will and incorporate that into our shows as we normally do. And uh, let's go ahead and get some shout outs to some people that have already logged yes. on to say hello. And let's see what we got here. Kel Davis, what's going on? Supernova Moore, what's going on as well? What up, uh, what up? Be still, Bryson here. Mark G says, let's go. So again, continue to leave your questions in the comments. We always, always, always and foremost want to hear about you because we could talk about stuff forever, but what does it matter if it's not what you want to hear about, right? So exactly. let's, uh, I kind of had a, a brain skip it there. I, don't, I didn't want to say brain fart, but there you go. I said brain fart. So yeah, me and Andre here tonight to talk to you a little bit about the number one pick was quarterback Bryce Young for Alabama. We also had a chance to talk with him on Zoom about 30 minutes ago. And uh, a little pet peeve. I mean, all this money that the Carolina Panthers have, the NFL has, our Zoom quality call with Bryce was a little bit like, are you on the phone in the hall with a bunch of people because there was all this noise in the background, but. You hear this, David Tepper? I'm, I'm sure that they're like, overall, it's not a big deal. It's only the media that, for the most part, that was a part of that, but I just wish it was a little bit better. It was hard for me to hear, but nevertheless, we're here to talk about. So, hey, start loading up those comments now with questions and comments for me and Andre. What do you think about this number one pick? What do you think about the season so far? But let's go ahead and um, let's go through some things with uh, after the pick, Scott Fitterer and our new head coach, Frankie Boy, got a chance to talk with the media about that pick of the number one uh, guy. A, a guy that people will talk about as short in stature, five foot 10. They said he weighed, I think it was about 210 ish. 205 at the combine. Ooh, that's generous. <laughs> yeah, I, that I, is I, generous. I know it was 205 for sure at the combine, but there's speculation that, yeah, he just <clears throat> drank all his protein milk and lifted like crazy, but that's not going to be a weight that he plays at. But we will get into that more as the season progresses. But, um, you know, lots of discussions about how Frank and uh, Scotty. Scott, I'm, I'm putting their names all apart. How Frank and Scott have talked about this number one pick all along. And it was interesting to hear them now be a little bit more transparent. They can now because they have made their pick, a pick that I feel like they could have, they didn't have to take so much time to make, but, but they made that pick <laughs> and they said, I forget which person it was that talked about it, but he said at the beginning, when Frank first got there and they were talking about the planning for the draft, they had, you know, Scott there, they had the scouts there and other people that's associated with uh, putting a brainchild together to come up with the pick. And at the end of that first meeting they had, it was asked about, okay, who does everybody like right now? If we could jump up, who does everybody like? And Frank said, so it was Frank that was speaking, Frank Wright. And he said, you know, it was everybody spoke that it was gonna be Bryce Young. 
that they wanted. And you know, they had to go through the process, a process that you hear David Tepper talk about and Frank and Scott talk about. And that led us to the Alabama quarterback, Bryce Young. Uh, Leonard Kowalski saying, good evening. It's a great day to be a Panther. Let me see if I remember how to put these on the screen. There it is. Hey. Good evening. It's been a great day to be a Panthers fan, except for the ones who had to go to the draft party, right? I mean, it's still raining. <laughs> like, I can hear it from outside my window right now. It is still raining, and it's been like that the whole freaking day today. It's crazy. And it, but it, they're toughing it out. Have you seen any images of that crowd from the uh, stadium? Yeah, I actually have a good friend who's over there right now, and uh, they're all covered in ponchos, and they're, I want to say shoulder to shoulder. I want to say it's that crowded, but there is definitely a good turnout at Bank of America uh, Stadium right now, and, you know, they're really excited about uh, Bryce Young and where things are headed. But, yeah, the, the turnout there was pretty was pretty good, I would say, despite the, uh, the uh, inclement weather, if you will. I think it was a great turnout. And, you know, it, it was yeah. probably a bunch of the people that, and, and nothing against these people, all right? I don't, don't want to say like they're like bad people. But like if you've never been to the game and, and, or have been to the game and want to get out on the field, you know, it's like a good experience for that guy, that lady that's like, hey, because the, the, the party was on the field. So I think that's always pretty cool when you get to be on the field of your favorite football team. So it was a pretty good crowd out there on the field itself. We got some questions coming in that I, I'm going to float around to get to, but I'm also going to still talk about a few things here. Um, one of the things that was asked to this group, Frank and, and Scott, was now that we know the quarterback, you guys have been saying 80% of the offense is what it is, and then the other 20% you conform to the quarterback that you have. So now that it's official that you have Bryce Young, what is that offense going to look like? He didn't really answer, <laughs> right? <laughs> he didn't really answer. And, and then later on, he was asked about would Bryce be the starting quarterback? You want to take that? Will Bryce be the starting quarterback? Uh, I don't think they have an idea, but they have a kind of a plan in place to where Andy Dalton will be the starter what as training camp uh, moves along. Uh, but I would imagine at some point before the season starts, Bryce Young will be the starting quarterback. You don't draft a guy at number one and have him sit behind Andy Dalton. I don't think you can really sell that uh, to the fans. But I think tentatively speaking, as of now, Dalton is the starter until further notice. Yep, he said he's got to earn it. A little bit of coach's talk. Yeah, he has to earn it. Coach speak. Yeah, and I think that he has to earn it means like show up to practice, pass the physical, <laughs> be on the field when it starts. Impress, impress us with your process, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and you will have earned that starting position. Hey, they talked about when they got a chance to meet Bryce and the impression that he made on them with his knowledge and his football IQ. Andre, was there anything tonight from <clears throat> that chat with, with Bryce that stood out to you? I think with me, I'm just always impressed with how humble he is, right? There isn't like anything that you would say where he's just, you know, flashy or just out there or arrogant. You know, he's very soft-spoken. And I remember the first time I actually heard him speak because I just never really paid attention to it, honestly. Um, yeah, it's just the soft-spokenness that kind of takes you back for somebody who has had all these accolades and this the impressive resume, the college resume back at Alabama, Heisman Trophy winner. You know, you think you're, he's this big guy with this ego and everything, but really he's just a down-to-earth, humble person. And I think that's something that I took away is something that, you know, you want to have, you know, as your leader of a franchise, because this is why you're drafting him, is to be that guy. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, his play in terms of his style 
is kind of the polar opposite of what you expect out of the persona whenever you see him talking to the media because he's just this flashy electric dude. But with him, you know, that's the one thing that I always, you know, think about. And I'm like, yeah, this dude can be the guy. You know, he has that personality, but he's very, very humble. And I appreciate that about him. Yeah, so, you know, in this day and age, you know, talking about your religious beliefs isn't done much. And he spoke about, and I think his dad as well, before uh, when they were on ESPN, spoke about his faith. And, and, it's, yeah. and that stood out to me as well as yeah, his, his humbleness. And he was kind of soft-spoken. You know he's excited. And, you know, not that some guys come on there and be like, ah, but, but some guys will be, you could tell they got a little bit more like, uh, man, what, what, I guess non-humbleness for lack of better words. But yeah, yeah. shout outs to everybody that was at the draft party because I too <laughs> can hear the rain just beating down on the ceiling outside. Oh, it's coming office. down over here too. So I'm not looking forward to the drive home later on tonight, but it, it, man, shout out to everybody that made it out there. But yeah, that, that stood out to me as well. And, and he, he, you know, Tepper talked about as he should, and this is what I want to hear my owner say, winning the Super Bowl and going to the Super Bowl with Bryce. And then that question somewhat was presented to Bryce about that. And he said, man, day by day, <laughs> you know, I think that his question was more maybe about the pressure, right? Not specifically, will you go to the Super Bowl, but the pressure that's associated with being a number one pick, your owner mentioned in the Super Bowl. And he's like, day to day, I, I just need to get in there, you know, learn what they're doing, learn what the plays are and just take it day by day. But in, in terms of him being a starter, I think that's a foregone conclusion. But Frank Reich mentioned that <clears throat> He's going to start out as number two. Andy Dalton will be number one. And then they'll, when the time's right, move him to number one. When do you think that time's going to be right, Andre? Uh, I would say before the start of week one. I think they better know by, <laughs> <laughs> they, they better know by the third preseason game, right? Uh, you know, and I try to look at it, you know, from the perspective, too, like how they handled Cam, too, like, you know, they said originally that Jimmy Clausen was going to be the starter, but everybody in that room knew that that was not going to be the case by week one. I think, you know, and it's kind of the same situation here. Eddie Dalton, you know, a better backup than <laughs> Jimmy Clausen, uh, you know, but I think just from that understanding, you know, he will move into that spot when things start to get real. Hey, I, I give it, you know, the unofficial Charlotte vibe over under. I'm going to say if, if the over under, uh, if the line is one week, are you going to go over or under, Andre? One week of once training, training camp starts. One week. Until they name him the starter? Yeah. Well, would you take the over or under? Do you want me to get really technical with the bet to actually do half? So yeah. one and a half. Are you going to over or under? Leave some comments below. Everybody watch. You're going to go under? I'm going to go under. Here's the thing. Like I said earlier, you don't draft a guy number one if he's not going to be your starter. So I'm going to take the under on that one. I think it's going to be days, not weeks. Days. Days. Okay. <laughs> hey, let's go ahead and get into these comments. Uh, I'm going to put them on the screen, Andre, and I'll let you uh, go through them. Because, you know, we got to give love to, to you guys. You guys are what makes us who we are and why we do these shows live. Yeah, right. yeah. Keep leaving those comments, everybody. I know it's going to be a little bit of a delay seeing them um, on my end. Oh, okay. Do we have uh, Tommy? I didn't put that on Tommy. the screen. What are you looking at? Oh, I'm wet. I'm, 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 putting, wet. Them, I'm putting them on the screen for you. <laughs> I'm not my... seeing them. All right, well, then Remember, I'll do there, it. there's a delay. There's a broadcast delay with that. <laughs> Hey, are you muted, Chris? I can't hear you.
suit. So can't hear him. All right, guys, I know you can hear me right here for a second. My, uh, even though I changed out my batteries in my microphone, they still died on me during the show, which is not cool, but I'm gonna switch my batteries. And Andre is, is back with us. I don't know why he left, but I'll bring him back on in a second. Let me switch out these batteries, and then I'm gonna get back to the comments that have been coming which I appreciate very much. Andre, I'm gonna bring you back on in just a second. I'm putting batteries in my microphone because I guess it was, maybe it was going in and out, but I saw my levels were working for quite a while and then they suddenly went out. And now I should be able to switch back to my microphone and then bring. Uh, check, check, check. Yep, so I'm good. And Andre, I'm gonna bring you back on. What up, sir? <laughs> Andre, are you there? All right. Andre still must still be having it. some problems. So I'm going to take him back out until uh, he tells me that he can hear me. So we picked still Bryce Young. It. And one of the great things about picking Bryce Young that I know David Tepper talked about was that when you get a guy like Bryce Young that is has so many skills, uh, such a hot, so many skills with his accuracy, so many skills about anticipating what's going on with the, the wide receivers running their routes and acting like the perfect reference as a point guard, that that helps you not have to have the absolute best wide receivers on your team. It doesn't mean that you don't want them, but it means like it helps you when you have a guy that can distribute the ball with accuracy and really facilitate the offense as good as Bryce Young does, where you don't have the need to have a top wide receiver. And for that reason, I don't see that this team would be willing to, to move any more pieces to go higher up. If anything, I would see this as being a, a situation that I know Scott Fitter has talked about getting more picks. So if there's an opportunity to maybe trade back a little bit and get a few more third, late third round, early fourth round picks, that's something that they would be interested in doing. So appreciate the question there, Leonard. Let's see if we can get Andre on here. All right, Andre, are you able to hear me yet? We don't know what's going on with Andre tonight. So I'm going to I'm going to put him back in timeout. So you're <laughs> there until and he just went away. What is Andre doing? All right, appreciate the question though, Leonard. Let's keep on going through here. Tommy, I know it's baby steps, but let's go to the Super Bowl. We got all the pieces players from players to staff. Yes, we do. I agree with you 100%. Appreciate the comment there, Tommy. What else we got the rain? <laughs> I like this from Charles Williams. He said, the rain, the rain is just tears of joy. That's all it is. It's just tears of joy. Let's try to get him on one more time. Andre Cat. Somebody find Andre Cassidy, my co-host, and, and get him back on this video. He keeps coming on and off, but we'll keep trying as long as he keeps trying. 
Appreciate the comment there, Charles Williams. Mark G, we made the right choice. I feel our offense needs the IQ. We won't be so uh, lame, I'm thinking is what you meant to put there. Yeah, man. This, this offseason, because of the acquisition of, well, the, the drafting of Bryce Young, because of the acquisition of Frank and all of the coaching staff that he has, it's just awesome. And it certainly, certainly makes you feel like we will not be lame. Andre, you're back on. Can you hear me this 15th time? I can hear you for the 15th time. Now. Yes, we got Andre <laughs> back. I'm not alone. We are on board. I had Andre, start safari, Mark G here. says, we made the right <laughs> choice. I feel our office needs the IQ. We won't be so lame. Take that one. I think we made the right choice, um, you know, throughout this whole process, right? You know, it was really the big debate between Bryce Young and CJ Stroud. And a lot of people were, you know, really debating the whole size thing, right? But, you know, there was somebody on this team, say, you know, drafted back in 2001 by the name of Steve Smith. Y'all know him, right? A lot of people questioned him about his height and if he can make it in the NFL. And I always say, heart over heights, reigns to fleeing. I think this is gonna be the same deal when it comes to Bryce Young. I think he's gonna prove the haters wrong. He's gonna prove all those doubters wrong, the people you know, during the process who said, oh, he can't do it. He can't even see over his offensive line. Well, we had a guy who was literally the same height as him last year named PJ Walker who was able to sling, sling it pretty well. Not to the effect of Bryce Young, of course, but we were still able to make adjustments despite having a guy who was under six feet tall calling the shots at the quarterback spot. So I think, you know, what it really Baker comes Mayfield. down to... Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield as well. Yeah, but <laughs> that's a story for another day. But I think regardless, it just comes down to coaching and the supporting cast. And I think, uh, you know, you can check both of those boxes off. Uh, I think, you know, he's going to be coming into a really good situation. And I'm happy that he's here. I'm really happy that he's here. All right. Fayette Nam 26 says, let's go. I'm not going to scream as, as loud as he wants me to with those exclamation points. <laughs> but he bright, baby. Uh, three years and we will be in the Super Bowl. Uh, what That's do you bold. take on that one? What do you take on that one? I think it's a possibility, but let's talk about making the playoffs first before we uh, talk about Super Bowl. We haven't made it to the years. playoffs. With Cam Newton, it took three years to get him to the to the playoffs. Let's talk about that first because we haven't made it to the playoffs in six years. Let's start with the baby steps, and then we'll start walking, and then we'll, we'll start running once we get to the playoffs. But you know, we got to manage our expectations here because – we still got some work to do to get to that point. Hey, you know, I'm not the one on predictions. I'm not big on predictions. I love to talk to players and coaches and get information directly for them. But you don't mind predictions. Is that right? I don't mind predictions, but it also depends on the conviction. Uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis in my eyes. All right. Playoffs in 2023 for the Carolina Panthers? I think it's a reasonable expectation. I mean, I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that they'll make it, but it's a reasonable expectation because you got to look at the NFC South. Who really gives you that ability where you're just like, man, I cannot sleep at night because of said quarterback going up against the Panthers? Now, really, let me tell you, Andre, team, you started your phrase off with the popular phrase that ends with profanity. Ones. Who really gives a... And I thought you were going to go there, <laughs> but, but I'm glad you went somewhere else. But when somebody says, who gives a, it's like, oh, okay, we're going we're gonna to change the, the content of the show. <laughs> but I'm sorry, continue on. But as you were saying, though, like, who really gives you that pause where you're like, man, I cannot sleep because of said individual. And really the only person that gives me even remotely that thought is Derek Carr. Because when you look at the NFC South, you look at the Saints, you look at the Falcons, and you look at the Buccaneers, two out of those three teams 
they don't know. They really don't know who their quarterback is. If you really want to know the truth. Like Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield, that's a downgrade with what they had prior. Is it going to be Desmond Ritter in Atlanta? I mean, that's there's a lot of questions there. So really, the only team that gives me you know the jitters, if you will, is New Orleans. And I think you know we have a legitimate shot going up against them. Uh, but this is a weak division, and I think it's reasonable to say that we can compete with how the roster is constructed right now. Fair enough. Hey, one, one of our most loyal people of all here, Shaquille Ooh. Bartol. Hey, guys, I'm driving home, draft party. Uh, he's driving home from the draft party, which was a lot of fun. Shaquille, tell me, how drenched did you get? Was it worth getting drenched? I'm sure he's, I could hear, hear him now saying <laughs> in his, his way, I, can, I, I can't do it this late at night, but I, I, can, I can hear you talk through your words. God of Blackness on tap. My man, he's been one of my loyal guys as well over the years. He is a big fan of David Tepper. And he's uh, going to get some more fans because of Bryce Young. No wonder but, he's been so talkative to the media these past couple of hours. Yes, he has. The Bryce Up Sun t-shirts are currently being mac- manufactured, I bet. <laughs> Bryce Up Sun. Hey, I like that. We might have to steal that one. Or the Bryce is right. Like the Panthers Twitter, uh, they posted a picture of that earlier. That was pretty good as well. All right, here, here he goes. Uh, Shaki giving us an inside scoop on the draft party. The fans' energy at the draft party was through the roof. I love the Bryce Young pick. Yes, me nor Andre decided to brave the elements and watch the draft party from the stadium. I guess we're bougie. We decided to stay at home and because our calls with Bryce is through Zoom and remote anyway, so it's not like, you know. But it would have been helpful. It would have been helpful to talk to Fitterer and Frank. We did miss out on that by not being at the stadium. But nevertheless, we got a few more to go through here. And keep leaving those comments, people. I know there's a (laughs) lot of people who are real happy right now with the Panthers selection. Please display that happiness in the comment section. Hey, I'm proving to you guys that I'm an equal opportunity person. I don't know if you can you see that comment on the screen there, Andre? Yep. Go ahead and read it. <laughs> LOL, we won't go to the Super Bowl until Chris figures out his eye. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, you know, I'll take the blame on my end too, because like I know on my end it was just like a level of static and then it just went quiet for like a solid three minutes and I was like, man. But hey. Good to have these audio issues now and not during the season. We're roughing hey. out some of the kinks that we have. You know, we've been on hiatus for the past couple of months, so it's kind of expected at this point, I would say. Hey, if that's what it takes, Tommy Chapanya, I don't know if I said that right. Let me, let me show you something here. The keys to the Super Bowl. Right there, buddy. Triple I got an batteries. extra pack in my pocket now <laughs> in case the batteries go out. So just so you guys know, you know, I like, I like being transparent. So with our broadcast, we do a lot of, all of our equipment is wireless uh, because we're, I'm not always in the studio. Uh, as you know, last year during training camp, I was down in Spartanburg going live after every practice, uh, probably about 80% of the practices. So th- my battery and one of the transmitters went out and I guess it was flaking out at first because that's why Andre didn't hear me. And then it just went out and I had to run to the front of the office, swap the batteries. But, you know, sorry. But if that means we're now going to the Super Bowl, like once again, like here, <laughs> I, got, I got it right, th- right there. We're going to the Super Bowl, Energizer. <laughs> right. And the moral of the story for Chris and for I as we try to be, you know, learners of the moment right come close to the camera have. andre i want you to come a little closer <laughs> always have a plan b always yes have a plan b and whatever you do because you're gonna have moments like that happening always have a plan b because you never know when stuff like that happens out of the blue and it does happen out of the blue you, can you see the next comment from lord Bezel dwarf Oh, what we got, what we got. Let's go. Big things ahead. Time to purchase a new jersey. Hey, 
save your spot and save me a spot because I'll be on that Bryce Young hype train. I'm excited. I am. I feel like, I feel like that this carousel is finally over. This carousel ride that we've been on since the departure of Cam Newton, we're finally at that point where we can say it is over. We have somebody legitimate here in Carolina. But we'll see what happens. But the initial feeling is we finally got somebody. Man, it, it feels so good from a media perspective going into this season compared to, man, I'd say the last season that it was hype was the year after they went to the Super Bowl, which is naturally, of course, hey, we went to the Super Bowl and there was a record turnout down there in Spartanburg for a training camp, huge crowds. Um, we just didn't do that well, but yeah, it's been such, such a long road and I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. We hadn't talked about it much, but hit the subscribe button, all right? If you're new to yes. the video, if you're still watching this right now, hit the subscribe button. The season is now back. The, the Charlotte Vibe calendar year for the NFL has now started. It starts back with the draft every year. So we're back. Hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications. Like, hit the like button. That's the simplest thing you can do to support our channel at all times. Help us grow. The more we grow, the more we can do because we just have more resources and uh, it's helpful. So we're going to end with this next question here. And uh, but thanks, Mark G. I want to shout out. Mm, I can't say this name, Matt. Matto Lomax uh, for the for the for the comment. But here you go. Mm -hmm. I am going to let. Andre, you want this one? How do you guys think Andy Dalton will be as a mentor? That is a great question. A great question. You know, he was drafted in the same year as Cam Newton. So it just yeah. shows you the longevity aspect of Andy Dalton. Hey, um, Cam Newton says there's not 32. <laughs> there's not 32 better than him. Well, 32 GMs don't agree with what he's saying. Right now, so. And that's coming call, from a Cam fan as well. So. He called him 32 what? He called him something, right? He said 32 something. MFs. Is that what he I said? There was some. There was some MFs. Well, I know there was some, some explicative. I don't know if he called him lanes yeah. or something, but yeah. He, but I, I love Cam. Like, he says I'm a good guy. I don't have a quote <laughs> clip lined up anymore. <laughs> Hey, like mine, take the like. You are a good guy. You I try to be. Guy. Yeah, but to get back to the question, I think he's going to be, you know, a steady presence, right? You know, he had his um, time in Cincinnati. You know, I thought he was a fairly solid quarterback, but he isn't, you know, top 15, top 10 caliber uh, kind of player, but, you know, he could be, you know, one of the best backups in the NFL in terms of, you know, what he brings to the table, the experience, the steadiness, like I said earlier. And, you know, he just adds that leadership quality as well. I mean, he had to do it for, what, five, six, seven seasons in Cincinnati. I mean, he brought that team to the playoffs for the first time in, like, 20 years or something crazy like that. So he has that uh, capability in him. Uh, I think, you know, with that veteran presence, you know, that's going to help Bryce Young grow uh, and mature. And, you know, he's already mature as is, but he's going to learn the ways of the NFL through the eyes of Andy Dalton. And I don't think you can find anybody uh, right now that is better suited for that role than Andy Dalton, just based off of the resume and what he brings to the table as um, supposedly their uh, starting quarterback as of now. <laughs> He's like, hey, let me let me go back and renegotiate my contract. You guys, I'm starting. Hold on, hold on. I left some zero. It said it in the contract, right? Right. Hey, hey, Lamar Verbatim. just got fifty million. So if Lamar just got fifty million, I can at least get twenty five, right? Who's his agent? <laughs> he doesn't even have one. <laughs> Good gracious! I'm negotiating on my behalf. <laughs> Hey, hey, Andre, it was good to get back on here because we have not been on here in a while. Everybody that joined us tonight, thank you so much for uh, joining us again. We're going to be on every day, Thursday, tonight's opening round. We will be back if for some reason 
Fitterer's phone rings and he makes a deal and we find ourselves <laughs> into a late first round pick, I can assure you we'll come back on. But I strongly think the next time that you're going to see us will be Friday night uh, talking about the, uh, I think tomorrow's rounds two and three that we'll I recap so. and enter yeah. the remaining rounds four through, I believe six or seven it will be Saturday. And then there will be another show on Sunday. So again, the coverage is going to resume as you would expect it to from Charlotte Vibe, keeping you up to date with the Carolina Panthers and everything going on. For Andre Cassidy, I'm Chris Jenkins. Take care, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. See you, everybody.